This is the biggest, heaviest box I've gotten yet. It literally says on the shipping label that it's 14 pounds. Hi everyone, it's Caitlin from Really Big Plant. Thank you so much for joining me for this video. So this video is the last video in my unboxing series from my year long subscription that I have been posting monthly on my channel for the past year now. So if you have not been watching any of my Hertz videos, this one is the one for you if you happen to click onto it because I'm actually going to be showing you every plant that I've gotten over the course of this past year in this year long subscription box. And if you are one of the people that has been watching my subscription unboxings from the beginning, thank you so much. Bear with me, I'm going to give my explanation for what this is one last time. My husband signed me up for a year long subscription service from Hertz Gardens as a present. And as he was signing up, I picture him as the little like smiling devil emoji because he knows that I had a really bad experience with Hertz in the past. And I had like multiple orders from them that really didn't turn out well. And I was kind of feeling like I didn't like Hertz at all. And he signed me up for the subscription box for some reason. Um, <laughs> And I'm not gonna lie, I was kind of mad at first, like why would you do this to me? Um, but it has been a really fantastic service. I actually think that I've been really enjoying most of the plants that have come in the subscription box. And at the very least, I've been really, really enjoying making unboxing videos and showing you what this subscription service has in store. So for this subscription service, they are supposed to send a six inch plant or sometimes, um, groups of smaller plants, like a four inch plant and a two inch plant. And it says in the description of this subscription box that they sometimes send pots, um, occasionally other goodies like plant specific fertilizer is what it says in the description, but I've never gotten anything like that from them. It comes down to about $30 a month for the subscription box. In front of me here, I have the August box. Last month was actually technically supposed to be my last month of this service, but I had some travel and some personal things going on and I tried to cancel my box from last month or just tried to have them put it on hold for a month and they made a little mistake and they sent it anyway, um, but they reassured me that they would be sending the August box still. So I got this box from them and I am so curious about what's inside of this one because I have never received a box this heavy from them before. It's heavy on both sides of the box. It arrived last night and I wanted to wait till the morning till I had better light to do the unboxing, but for the past like 12 hours or even longer, I've just been staring at this box <laughs> wondering what's inside. We're gonna go ahead, open this up, see what's in here, and then I'm going to show you month by month all of the other plants that I have received in this subscription and how they are doing now. Um, for the ones that I do still have. So let's get to it. <gasps> ah, there's a huge bug. It's one of those, like, I think it's one of those bugs that eats mosquitoes that looks like the world's largest mosquito. I'll show you. I don't know if you can see it. I hope it's dead. Please be dead. <gasps> I'm so terrified. Can you come get this bug? Alive? Bringing back horrible memories of college when those used to just live so many of them in the bathroom in my dorm. I'm ir irrationally afraid of bugs, so don't judge me. I, well, I guess you can judge me if you want. You can do whatever you want, but bugs are freaky to me. <laughs> so that was scary. Now I can move on. Um, it looks like there are two plants in this package, and it does look like, at least from what I can see, this one does not have a pot. I thought there was going to be at least two ceramic pots in here, but I guess not. So there's something wrapped in paper. This one is wrapped in tissue and bubble, bubble wrap, which is how the plants have normally come each month. And then this one, whatever this is, there's something in a paper bag that I'm curious about that is pretty different looking than everything else I've received. So let's just open this one up first. Okay, who knows what this is? Okay. A money tree. So, Pakira aquatica. Um, you know, I'm 
excited about this actually. So I, I never used to like money trees, but they've been growing on me very slowly over time. Okay. First, let's just talk about the quality of the plant. It looks pretty squished up. I mean, you could see in the box like how flattened it was packaged. The plant got crushed in the box. Um, <laughs> they kind of flattened it out and squished all of the leaves up, which um, would be problematic if Pakira aquatica wasn't such a tough plant. So these have these really big, thick stems down here that get braided together. And um, in my experience with this plant, even if they lose all of their leaves, they tend to regenerate and grow back. Um, like any other plant that has like a really big, thick base or trunk, they tend to be able to have enough energy reserves and nutrients and stuff like that stored for the plant that if something bad does happen to all the foliage, they're able to regrow. So um, money trees are great. They are the like the feng shui plant that people like to get because they think that it brings prosperity or it's good luck. Um, when customers would come into the plant shop looking for a plant that's meant to be symbolic, the money tree is kind of the go-to plant. I like to unbraid my money trees. I think that this braided trunk look is not extremely attractive. I mean, I could see why some people might like it, but personally, it's just not really for me. Um, so this tree, will probably get unbraided pretty soon. Um, I can show you my other one. I actually have it right here next to me. My cute little unbraided money tree. I think they just look a lot better like this when the trunks are all separate and they have a little room and it creates this really fun kind of like tropical vibe in my opinion where they look more like little trees on a beach rather than uh, some kind of like total bondage plant. So <laughs> that's how I feel about money trees. It looks like all five of the trunks in here are alive, so that's good. And um, yeah, I think that this is a cute plant. I mean, it looks a little bit crumpled now, but it's pretty sizable and um, I'm, I'm glad to have it. I've been wanting to increase my money tree count in my apartment, but whenever I'm in a plant shop, I never really feel like the money tree is the one I want to spring for, so I'm glad that it was included in the subscription this month. And then we'll see what this other thing is. When they've sent six inch plants in the past, it's usually been the only thing in the package, so super curious to see what's in the remaining little parcel in here. So, oh, haha, I thought this was a plant! It's potting soil! Oh my god. Okay. My husband is cracking up over the side. I told him to be really quiet, so he's like laughing silently right now, but... Okay, so this is funny because the original package I ordered from Hertz that I mentioned at the beginning of this video and said that it was really problematic, my husband and I called it the dirt box because the first shipment that I got from Hertz, they didn't provide like sufficient packaging and didn't like wrap up any of the pots, um, the plants in the pots. And so when I opened the box, it was just completely full of dirt. Like as if someone had just taken like 10 plants and just tossed them into a box with like one piece of tissue paper on top and then sent it. And so by the time I got it, the whole box was like soaking wet and just completely full of dirt. Like the bottom of the box had like a layer of soil. And so we call it the dirt box, but the funny thing is, is that they sent me dirt this time. So we're full cycle here on my dirt box unboxings because it started as a dirt box and it ended as a dirt box. <laughs> We've got some potting mix. The key ingredient is living compost made from food scraps. I don't use compost based soils, but maybe I'll try it out. I mean, I'll probably try it out, right? Now we can move on and I can show you all of the other plants from my subscription. So part of me is kicking myself for telling you guys that I was gonna do this because <laughs> a lot of these plants are not in super good shape. But in my defense, I didn't want any of these. I didn't choose any of these plants. And so, I've got a lot of other plants. My collection is actually probably up past like 400 plants now. And I have a lot of other, a lot of other plant babies that I like to pay more attention to than these plants. I stuck them into places where they're not super visible and 
because I'm kind of like an out of sight, out of mind kind of person, a lot of these plants I really, really underwatered. And I'm an underwater to begin with, and I'm working on it. I'm really working on it. Um, but a lot of these plants didn't really grow that much over the course of the past year. On the whole, I'm actually really, really happy with this collection. And when I group them all together for this video to take a look at all of the plants, it is a really respectable plant collection. And I would have to say that if you were like, not somebody who's into the whole rare plant thing, but are just trying to build up a collection and you don't really have that much preference for what types of plants you want. This subscription box was fantastic. Um, the, the array of plants that I have, there's a whole breadth of types of plants. There's some for direct sun, there's some for low light. There are a couple of faster growing ones, slower growing ones. So I think it's a really good range of plants. The one thing that I will say about subscription boxes, and this is a little bit of insider information. When you sign up for a subscription box and tell a company, here, take my money and I don't even care what you send me. <laughs> From their perspective, it makes a lot of sense to send merchandise that nobody else wants. Not necessarily defective stuff, but just stuff that you haven't been able to move. If someone is willing to just pay you for anything, you send them stuff that you've, you've got, right? I'm not saying that that's what Hertz is doing necessarily because I don't work for them and I don't know but probably a lot of these plants, like if they're not plants that you feel like are super desirable, it's probably because most people don't feel like they're super desirable plants and that's why they're part of the subscription box. So just a note, so I've got 14 plants that remain. There are more than 12 because a couple of months came with multiple plants. This is my Aglionema Maria and it was in the August box from August 2020, so a year ago. It arrived pretty damaged. There wasn't a lot of support and most of the original leaves that were there on the plant when I first got it ended up dying off after not that long. This plant, if I had been paying more attention to this plant, it would be a lot bigger than this by now. Um, and I put it in a really low light spot and I barely water it probably like once a month if the plant is lucky. Um, <laughs> Which is one of the reasons why I actually really like Aglionemas. I have a couple other Aglionema. I stuck this one in the very back of my entire group and so I just kind of forgot about it. This one didn't get a whole lot of light or a whole lot of water over the past year. And then when I decided that I was going to show you all of the plants from this unboxing service, I took this plant out of its dark spot and decided that I was going to try to like give it some fertilizer and some more light to try to like see if I could get it to grow a little bit before showing it to you guys. And of course, this plant is totally thwarting me and just keeps flowering since I moved it into the light. It has just been like flowering nonstop, hasn't grown any new leaves, but <laughs> keeps putting out these little flowers. And it probably is because I changed its light condition so drastically and have been watering it that the plant is like also changing what it's doing and it's putting out all these little blooms. Um, they're not particularly attractive flowers. They just have like a, a light green bract on there. I was hoping that I could induce this plant to have a little growth spurt before I showed it to you guys, but it's just been flowering and flowering. So <laughs> it's betraying me, but um, yeah, it's been doing pretty well. Um, all of the new leaves that have grown in look really nice. I don't know if I mentioned, this is an Aglionema Maria, which is a hybrid of I believe just the like really common species Aglionema, the Aglionema commutatum, which has leaves that look a lot like this. There's like a ton of varieties that look very similar. This is a really cute one. Um, I'm hoping that it's going to continue to just be unproblematic for me. I was kind of bummed about it when I first got it because it was so squished up, but it's cute now and we're doing pretty good. And this one actually, it did come with this pot, I believe. This was one of the only plants that came with a pot from the subscription box. The next one, <laughs> from September of last year is this Aglioni, or not Aglionema, sorry, is this um, Anthurium andrianum, which is just like a Dutch Anthurium. So when I unboxed this plant, I was really disappointed because when I see these Dutch Anthuriums with these red flowers like this, um, I just instantly think of the grocery store, like these plants are so readily available. I'm like, why'd they send me grocery store Joe? But I actually really like it now. <laughs> I was disappointed in it, but I got it a red pot and I think it's cute. 
And I actually had never bought one of these for myself or ever owned one. No one had ever given me one of these as a gift. And it's been really, really easy to take care of. Um, when I first got it, I was totally hating it and was completely ignoring it. And I was basically just gonna like let it die. Put it in a spot where it was getting way more direct sun than I think it probably should have been. And I knew that was happening and I just like didn't really care for the first few months. And all of the leaves were like burning to a crisp. And I just kind of was like, whatever, I'm gonna just let this plant die. But it's a survivor. I mean, look at it now. I kind of, I started watering it and it's just been doing really well. It flowers nonstop and I can't hate a plant that just tries so hard to live. It has been hanging in there and it has actually been thriving. So I'm not gonna get rid of this anytime soon. I like it. And I've got my little message in there that says Vincent Van Grew. It's just a cute little plant. So my September plant doing well. This was my third Hertz plant that I got from October. It is the Aglionema Zebrina. No. I'm calling every single plant an Aglionema for some reason. I just like, this is a Calathea Zebrina, not an Aglionema. Um, and when they sent it to me, they shipped it in a six inch terracotta pot. And I could tell from the size of the plant when they first sent it that it did not belong in a six inch pot. It was way too small. So I quickly after receiving it, repotted it into just a little four inch plastic pot. Um, and it was doing okay, but actually like a few days after unboxing it, I noticed some mealybugs on it and I removed the mealybugs and I treated it. And then the mealybugs were like pretty persistent. They kept coming back on this plant, which was freaky to me because normally when I treat mealybugs, they tend to not come back for me because I'll use like a systemic insecticide. So it just like kept having these persistent mealybugs. And then because it had mealybugs, I separated it from the rest of my calathea, which I keep in an environment where they get like a lot of humidity and are by a humidifier. Um, but I didn't want this one to be near them. So I put it somewhere else and it hasn't really been getting the type of humidity that the calathea is like. And so it is getting all of these little like brown tips and stuff, but I think on the whole, it's a pretty cute plant. And the calathea zebrina is just like a really, um, a really striking calathea. It's got those kind of like velvety leaves. For the fourth month of my subscription, they sent this, oh, actually I see in my notes here that the calathea zebrina from last month came in this pot. So it wasn't a red terracotta pot, it was this, yeah, the fourth month, they sent this ficus elastica, um, a burgundy rubber tree. They sent it in a plastic pot, and if I remember correctly, it was super overwatered, and so I pretty quickly switched it into this pot, which was the one that I had removed the calathea from the previous month. And actually, this plant has only grown <laughs> this one leaf in the entire time that I've had it. It's been like seven months now or something. Um, but actually I think that's pretty normal for ficus. I put it in kind of a dark location and in a darker spot, ficus just grow really slowly. So the fact that this plant has barely been doing anything, um, just is totally normal to me. And it's putting out another new leaf right now. So, um, that's good too. Okay. And now we have come to December, which was the fifth month and I'm going to have to show you a little drawing. <laughs> <laughs> of the Norfolk Island pine that I received because it is no longer with me. The subscription box from December showed up the day after Christmas and it had a Norfolk Island pine in the box. The Norfolk Island pines, they're the little, little trees that look like Christmas trees and they grow into huge, full-size, giant trees. They're always on sale and available around the holidays, Christmas holidays, because they really look like Christmas trees. I think that they're really cute to decorate and to have on your table around Christmas time, but after the Christmas season, the Norfolk Island pines to me just seem like they don't really belong. Kind of like those red poinsettias that everyone gets around the holidays. Um, to me, they just scream Christmas, and once it's past Christmas, I'm not really interested. And someone commented on my video th that they are from... Oh, I'm sorry, I'm getting this wrong. I should have looked this up. But they are not from the United States, and they don't understand why people in the US treat Norfolk Island pines like trash. And it made me feel totally guilty for the reaction I had to hating my Norfolk Island pine because they're right. Um, Norfolk Island pines are great plants and they are really beautiful. It's just that for me, they carry too much of a Christmas spirit 
Christmas feel that I just don't really like having them in my collection. They don't really feel like tropical to me. They feel wintry. I just put it outside and um, I live in a really big apartment building and I leave plants over by the garbage area and they get snatched up right away usually. So I didn't really feel too bad. We left it outside and hopefully that plant has found a happy new home where someone likes it all year round. Oh, and then I also got I still have this one. This is the Hoya Carii, a little Hoya heart. Oops, saucer's broken. Um, but yeah, this one also came in December. So this is the single leaf cutting of a... Oh! Look at that root! <laughs> Can you see that? I was not expecting that. I plopped it into this little pot ages ago and didn't think that it was... Uh, was growing but yeah usually these little Hoya hearts they're really cute you kind of just treat them like a little succulent don't water them too often and don't expect them to do anything mine obviously hasn't grown any more plant um, in the time that I've had it but it's definitely still alive and I kind of like these Hoya hearts so <laughs> this is cute and I'm glad I have it it looks like it's rooting out pretty well so if you haven't seen these before, these are just single leaf cuttings from a Hoya um, that get rooted out and usually they don't do anything besides stay a single leaf. But you can keep them alive like pretty much indefinitely if you just uh, water them kind of infrequently. Okay, so those were my December plants. In January, we had the tortoise and the hare. Should we start with the tortoise or the hare? <laughs> I can show you my turtles. So in January, they sent a Peperomia prostrata and a rabbit's foot fern, which is why I'm saying tortoise in the hair. Um, but yeah, these little string of turtles are so cute and they've been growing really well for me in the time that I've had them. Um, they just came in a tiny little two inch pot. I stuck in this bigger pot, but you can see that they're flowering. These little like rat tails on there are the inflorescences. Um, they're not super cute and you can cut them off if you don't like them and it usually induces more foliage growth. This string of turtles has been doing really well. It's been growing, um, it's been growing great for me. So I really like this one. Um, but see, in contrast, <laughs> we've got this rabbit's foot for in the Divalia tyromanii, I think is what I decided was the accepted current name. Um, <laughs> but you can see that we're not doing super well with this one. Um, I put it in a really low light location for many months and it just wasn't really doing anything. And then I moved it into brighter light and in the slightly brighter indirect, indirect light location, if I miss a watering, the entire plant dies back. Um, but then it, it grows, it grows back again. So here we are in another cycle of baby new growth popping up after I missed a watering and the entire plant died. So that's kind of been what the life cycle has been like for this rabbit's foot fern. Um, I wouldn't necessarily say that it's a super hard plant. It just keeps dying because I keep forgetting about it and it's in a really, really small pot. So like this from here down, this is the tray and the pot itself is like really little and then the plant is kind of recessed into the pot. So there's basically only like an inch of soil in there. Um, and so I know that if I repotted this into something bigger, I could probably, I would probably have a lot better luck with getting this to grow into something bigger than what it is now. But because it's in such a little pot, um, it needs water all the time. And I just haven't cared enough about this plant to do anything about it. Maybe I will now that I'm talking to you, but maybe not. <laughs> so we'll see. Um, some people have expressed they think this plant is like totally disgusting and <laughs> the rabbit's feet are pretty gross. It's definitely like not my favorite plant as you can see, but it's still alive, which tells me that it's like kind of a fighter. <gasps> Got the tortoise and the hare here. And just like in the story, the hare is definitely losing. Then in February for our seventh month, we got a bromeliad and a Haworthia. So this bromeliad, bromeliad ichmea, it's the um, like the frappuccino vase bromeliad. 
Um, I think it's also called the urn plant. So this one is, is cute. Um, I don't have too many bromeliads. They're never a plant that I go for in the store. This is one that's definitely been growing on me because I never considered myself a fan of these bromeliads before, but it's actually been growing pretty well and it's fun to water it. You pour water into the, the middle hole and it holds it like a cup and you just like check on it and when the water is mostly depleted, you just refill it. And I think it's like a really fun way to care for a plant that's really different than all the other plants that I have. So this one's been doing pretty well and it's grown, I think, an entire new rosette of leaves in the time that I've had it. There were some like really crispy outer ones when the plant first arrived and those I've peeled away by now. I think, I think there's one still left, but um, yeah. It's doing well, it's pretty cute. And this is a plant that can handle really bright light, which is good for my apartment. And then this is the little glass Haworthia that came, which um, I actually forgot I had this one and I stuck it behind some other plants in a place where it was getting like pretty much no light for many months. And this is one of the only types of succulents that can handle a very low light condition. Haworthias, unlike any other type of succulent are pretty well adapted for lower light. They have different physical mechanisms for being able to harvest light like this one, for example, is called the glass Haworthia because it has these like translucent cell walls that allow more light to come into the plant and bounce around on the inside where the plant stores a lot more chlorophyll. Um, so it helps this plant harness as much light as possible from every available source, which is why this is one of the plants, one of the types of succulents that can be in a much lower light condition. Mine is a little bit like shriveled, or not shriveled, but the leaves have grown kind of elongated. And that is because I've been keeping it in a lower light situation and haven't really been watering it too much. Um, but it's doing fine, as you can see. So this one is really cute too. Little glass Horthia. We are up to month eight and this month, unfortunately, features another plant, which I'm gonna have to just show you in the form of a drawing because it is no longer with me. Um, and that is the Croton Mammy. When I got it, I was worried because one of the things that I know about crotons is that they are spider mite magnets. They really, really like to be in good old humid Florida. And when they're inside, not in like 90% humidity, they tend to be spider mite magnets. And I think if you can get a plant and you like thoroughly treat it a lot of times and you can establish it in your home, you can probably create a situation where you have crotons without spider mites. But this one came with spider mites and I didn't like it enough to try to really save it. Um, I mean, I did, I tried, I tried, right? It had spider mites and crotons like really bright direct sun in order to maintain their color. So I, put it into a plastic bag and sealed it up and put it in a really bright light location and it lived that way for like months. Um, but as soon as I took it out of the bag and let it just be in the normal humidity levels in my apartment, it got covered in spider mites. I mean, it just got destroyed. Um, and then I tried to treat it and then I accidentally left it in my kitchen for a few weeks and then it really didn't like that because it was really dark in there um, and it really had spider mites then. And so <laughs> it just wasn't pretty. And that one went into the trash, but it is not here anymore. I'm really sorry to the people who like crotons. I tried. The other plant that came that month was this air plant, a little Tillandsia xerographica, which when it arrived, I was really freaked out about how wet it was, but it actually wasn't that bad. Um, and it's been doing okay. Um, it has, lost, continued to lose some of the leaves that were like really soaked in the beginning that I was worried about, but um, for the most part, it's just been doing its totally unproblematic air plant thing where it just needs, needs pretty much nothing. So <laughs> this is a cute one. And then the ninth box that came, the April box, included this Peperomia obtusifolia, variegata. So it's a little variegated, teacup peperomia and it did come with a terracotta pot so that was exciting because this was the first plant that came with a pot since the like second month or something like that um so yeah it came with this terracotta and it was kind of smashed up when it arrived it was not in good shape and the leaves 
were and are still covered in this weird modeling that kind of looks like spider mite damage to me, but it also kind of doesn't because the individual spots are like bigger than what you would expect to see with than with spider mites. Um, there's like black stuff on this plant too that I thought was dirt but didn't wash off. So I'm not really sure what's wrong with this peperomia. Um, and within like the first two weeks of me having it, um, an entire one of the plants in this pot got totally rotten and died. Um, there were three plants in here originally and there are two in here now. And I'm not sure what happened to the third one. I think I think it got damaged during shipping or was like overwatered before it got sent because it rotted from the bottom up. Um, it just turned completely black and fell over and the whole thing just like disintegrated. Um, but these two plants that are in here seem like they're doing okay. They haven't grown. Um, I see, I guess this one is growing like a tiny little new leaf here. Um, but yeah, they haven't really been doing much. I've been watering it because it is in a terracotta pot, so I'm less worried about overwatering with this one. Um, so I've been, I've been watering it when it dries out and I don't know, I was kind of just disappointed that one of the plants in this pot instantly died. Um, but that's okay. I think it's doing all right. I'm not a huge fan of peperomias, and so this one, I don't know, this plant just doesn't really do it for me. Although when I see it like on camera and I'm holding it, I guess it looks kind of cute. My 10th box, the May box, was this Dracaena fragrance, a Dracaena lemon lime. So this is a really cute one. I love Dracaenas. I think they're great plants and that they're like pretty easy. They can handle a whole wide range of light conditions from direct light to pretty low light. Um, they just can be a little bit trickier in low light because they really, really don't want to be overwatered. Um, but I was happy about this plant arriving, um, especially because for some reason I've noticed the lemon lime Dracaenas are always or they're usually priced more expensive than the other colors, even some of the like variegated ones that have cool stripes and stuff like that. I'm not sure why, but the lemon lime um, tends to be a little pricier. All right, we're up to June already. And my June plant, the 11th plant that came in my subscription was this ficus umbellata, which I've been having a spider mite battle with and it hasn't been the easiest for me, so. <laughs> It's been kind of yellowing. It already dropped off one really big leaf. And um, I've been struggling a little bit with this plant. I mean, I've been trying to treat it like all of my other ficus and make sure that it dries out between waterings, um, get some bright indirect light, but it is not as happy as it was when I first got it. It's kind of hard to tell on camera, but some of the leaves are looking a little bit yellower than they should be. Um, I suspect that I maybe moved it into too bright of a light situation right away. I kind of put it somewhere where it gets like a little bit of direct sun. Um, not for very long, but I think it was a little bit stressful for this plant. And the leaf, this leaf was the new leaf on the plant um, that was just starting to unfurl when the plant arrived in the mail and it was already kind of damaged and never really developed fully. It's a little bit unhappy and has some like yellow spots and stuff on it. But the next leaf that came out after that is growing successfully and it's kind of hard to tell, but I think it's still getting bigger. So um, that's good. And there's the little new growth spike in there for the next leaf, which looks like it's got a long ways to go before it develops, but in my care, ficus have always been really slow growers. So this ficus umbellata, I think is really beautiful and I'm really excited for this plant to hopefully get really big someday. The last one from last month, I've got my Ming Aurelia. So I thought that this plant was going to open up a little bit more um, it has a little bit, but it's also been kind of dying back. There's a lot of dead stuff in here that needs to be taken out. I'm not too concerned about all of these like little dead leaves because when the plant did show up, it was pretty like overwatered and um, it's so dense that when I look at something like this, I kind of just know that some of the leaves on the inside are going to start to die unless I give this like the most ideal lighting, which is like really bright light with like a shade cloth, um, which is not something that I have in my apartment. So this plant probably isn't going to get 
like that perfect lighting condition that allows it to be totally like bushy and to maintain all of the inner growth in a really healthy way. So I've been kind of expecting a little bit of this die off and I'm not too concerned. It's a really cute one and I really like it. So there you have it. This is the plant from last month. And then I guess we're full circle from the plant that I just opened up today, the money tree. So there are all of my Hertz plants from the past year. I feel like this is actually a really good plant collection. Like if you didn't have a lot of plants or if I didn't have other plants and then signed up for the subscription box and had, you know, this anthurium and the ficus, peperomia, money tree, the bromeliad, dracaena, all of those plants, this is a really, really respectable plant collection. So if you're looking to get your plant collection started and you have no idea what types of plants to get or what to buy, this is a really, really good place to start, I think. You know, I, I sort of complained every month about the shipping and about the quality of the plant and the plant selection. But when I look at all of the plants together as a group, I feel like it's a really good looking bunch. So this subscription to me felt like, feels like it was worth it because I really like this group of plants. Um, was it monetarily worth it dollar for dollar? Not completely sure. You know, I was looking on the Hertz website last night and I was looking up some of these plants and most of them are priced in the like 15 to $20 range, even a lot of the six inch plants, which is like a little bit annoying to see because the subscription box was like $25, $30 a month, but that's okay. You know, and plant prices change all the time. So I think comparing the price of these plants now um, isn't necessarily fair because I don't know how much Hertz was charging for them at the time that I received them in the subscription. And I just decided that one year from now, we're gonna come back and look at all of these plants again and see how they're all doing. Um, I'm not gonna make any promises about which ones I'm still going to have, but I'm sure some of them will still be in my collection, hopefully most of them. So a year from now, let's plan to meet up again and take a look at all of these plants. So. I hope that this was helpful for you if you've been considering a subscription box, like a longer term one. Um, I had a really fun time going through these unboxings. I can't believe that it's been a year already, actually. I'm definitely looking to see what subscriptions I should sign up for next. Um, not completely sure if I'm gonna do another annual subscription, but I'm definitely open to the possibility of signing up for more things. I feel sad that this is over now. Um, so I'm gonna have to think of what to do next. I would love to know your opinion on whether or not you thought that this grouping of plants was worth it. Um, but either way, I really enjoyed doing this. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you all are having an amazing week and I hope to catch you in the next one. Bye.